For the few people watching, thanks so much. Just gonna show you a quick video on how to make um, some trees in Magica Voxel. I uh, based it off of Dima's Voxel and this is the site here for that. Um, took a long time so I kind of lost patience for it and went my own way. So here's what to do. Start off with a blank slate. I make it one thick, 256 high and wide so you can draw a um, silhouette of a tree stump on there. Of course you want to reference a photo of the tree that you want to be making. Make it 3D. Here I'm just trimming it down so that it's relatively not square. You're going back for reference. Now you can start drawing branches. Uh, really just whatever you want it to be. Main thing here is you don't want to go too far out of profile, which is why I go back and erase those ones that are poking out there. Um, so that it kind of fits the overall silhouette of the tree. Now that you've got those drawn, what you want to do is move them over so that they're sitting in the middle of the stump. From here, you can start to arrange them around. I do it two at a time just so you can adjust them both and that way you don't do what I do here and select it one at a time and then drag it over. Um, that way you can select two, move them around, adjust one, put it over by the trunk and then select the other so you don't have to go back and select a bunch of different things. So um, I usually do it two at a time. Anyway, long story short. Um, this might take a little while. This is probably the longer part of the process. Um, I got the benefit of speeding this up like 20 times speed, but it usually takes a little while, so you want to make sure it's symmetrical all the way around. When you look at it from the top, it should be vaguely circle-shaped and not too many clustered on one side. Um, as you can see here, I'll have to go back afterwards and um, readjust things. As you can see, I made the branches red. This is just for contrast, so I can kind of see where they are compared to the tree trunk. Of course, I'll change that later. Same reason the trunk is gray as well. So there we go, kind of a nice tree. Just kind of want to make sure it looks like a good dead tree. Not many, not many branches poking out too far. Uh, that one is, so I readjust that. Okay, that's pretty much the hard part. So now we're gonna select the tree and the trunk. This is just so that when we erase, we don't accidentally modify it because you can't modify things that are selected. Get a large voxel brush and we're gonna start painting on our leaves here. So um, I don't know if the size exactly matters, um, but you just don't wanna to start too close to the trunk because trees don't have leaves growing on their trunk, they grow on the branches. So. I usually leave a little bit of space, but if you get some on, it's okay. And you basically just start coloring on all of the branches. If you get some off to the side, don't worry about it for now. Just get that off afterwards. So the main thing here is you kind of want some even coverage. Um, not a lot of gaps. You can't see the trunk. I'll go through and do that afterwards. here. I'll just delete those extra parts. Looks good. I'm just going in through here again and checking see if there's any parts that don't look super normal. And I shrunk it to better fit the proportions of the aspen in the reference. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Just filling in a little bit more small gaps. Now we can choose our colors. This is a great website. Um, kind of lets you choose like a little range of colors here. You can do this similar thing manually as well, uh, but I would reference your photos for the colors that you'd want to get as well. Now what you can do here is if you click on that bottom square there in the middle, um, and then click and drag and then release on the color. It's like a color picker function. Um, so you can use that to get all your colors set up. When you've got that set up, you want to randomize. 
And then what I do is I delete a portion of those colors, basically just deletes a percentage of the voxels. The colors don't really matter a ton right now. Um, and I'm just trying to get the texture right here. So I go through and I delete them. The closer I get to what I need, the less colors I delete at the same time. And then I go back and I randomize it again to the range of colors I'd like. Um, you can notice I do have the color of the trunk and the color of the branches included in that. I think I changed the branches to red or back from red. So I'm kind of done with that other tree, that yellow one on the other side. I'm just erasing and adding uh, again to make it so that it's less, um, less obviously just spheres that were added to that. So it makes the texture a little bit more natural. Repeating the process again. Um, you can kind of see which one you prefer better, but uh, I think I like the second version more, so that's what I usually stick with. Um, and here we're going through and creating the trunk. So I usually do a main color for the aspens, smaller um, light color, and then a darker color for the little dots on the tree. Um, so basically what happens is when you randomize it, it's 50-50. If you need less, a lesser percentage, um, you can randomize it again between the two decreases the percentage here. So now I've got them duplicated and what we're gonna do is I can copy and paste and then modify them uh, because really if you've got all the same tree even rotated around it doesn't look great. So I'm just gonna change the scale, play with the scale, uh, make some smaller versions, some shorter versions. Um, it makes it look a little bit more natural and that way you don't have to go through the whole process of creating the whole tree from start to finish and it still looks pretty dang good I think. Now what we want to do here is you can copy by reference, which is control shift C. And what that does is when you copy by reference and you edit one, it edits both at the same time. So really useful depending on what you're doing. Um, you may want to just copy and paste for some things, but in this case, I'm just kind of demonstrating that edit one, you edit both. So now I'm kind of going through here and rearranging the colors. So the same shape, structure for the tree is the same but we're getting in some different colors just to provide some variety and to kind of disguise the fact that I'm using the same tree model and of course if you want to make a bunch of tree models for your projects that's great um, here what I'm doing is I'm changing the geometry to sparse what that does is it makes it so it loads a wider area Now what I'm doing is using the world view layers function where I can take them and put them all in their own layer and turn off the other layers. This is really useful to isolate certain elements um, and take a look at what we've got. So looks pretty good in my opinion. 